Hi folks, welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at the limits of a function. Okay, before we look at the limits of a function, I just want to look at perhaps a lead into why we might look at the limits of any particular function. Okay, so what I'm going to look at is drawing the graph of y equals to the power of x. Okay, now you might remember that this is what we call an exponential equation or an exponential graph. Now, if you're not sure what this graph is going to look like, you can always drop your table of values to help you. Okay, that's always a good place to start. You know, we might go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. We're going to do this for any graph that we are not sure of what it looks like. Okay, and we simply substitute the x values into this part. So, 2 to the power of negative 3 would be 1 over 2 cubed, which would be 1 over 8, 1 over um, 4, 1 over 2, 2 to the power of 0 equals 1, then it's 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So it's going to give me some good values there. So let's chuck in some values here. Um, that x value, so we've got negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Now when you draw this graph, um, make sure that your graph is actually quite accurate. Mine obviously is not. It's just a real um, basic sketch. Um, then I've got, um, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, obviously mine is definitely not accurate because they should all be the same distance apart and obviously they are not. Okay, so let's start putting our numbers on. So negative 3, 1 eighth, which is going to be pretty close there. Negative 2, 1 quarter, a little bit further away. Negative 1 and 1 half, so halfway there. 0 and 1, 1 and 2. You can start seeing it's going to get steeper really quick. 2 and 4, 3 and 8. Okay, so we're going to draw, sketch that graph. As you can start seeing, it looks like that. Now, hopefully you recognize or remember that's what an exponential graph looks like, where it's crossing at 1, okay, our y-axis at 1, and it gets closer and closer to the y-axis. Now, if we look at my x values, and if we talk about the limit, where we say as x approaches really small numbers, you know, it could be, you know, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1 million. But we say if x approaches negative infinity, that's a sign for negative infinity, so all the way down that x-axis, okay, where we can't see, Okay, the limit of this function would equal zero because the limit of my function, well, it's basically asking what looking at my y values. You know, you can see as x goes that direction, my y values go that direction. They get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, which is the value of y is equal to zero. It never quite touches it though, okay? But in real in reality, I guess, you know, we say that it pretty much does touch it and it has a value of zero as it hits the y, the x-axis. Well, it gets pretty close to it. So why do we look at these limits? Okay, well, apart from looking at exponential equations or even things, I guess, like you might remember you had the hyperbolas look like this, where, again, both of those graphs approach either the x or y axis, but never quite touch it. Limits are quite important when looking at curved lines, okay? And why are curved lines important? Okay, they're particularly important for calculus, where we look at... Um, I guess the rate of change because that's you know what those curved lines are or in other words differentiation okay so you'll be looking at differentiation very shortly but also looking at the area under a curve which is called integration so two 
really significant parts of mathematics that you'll be delving into, um, I guess, uh, later on in this particular course, that limits are really important with, okay? And it will help us understand the basics of our calculus. Um, it also helps us with a thing called continuity and looking whether a graph is continuous, like in this particular case, that line continues in one form, um, one nice motion, or if it might discontinue at a particular point, um, okay, which can occur. So lots of different reasons on why limits are important and why we need to look at them. Okay, let's take a backwards step now. Let's have a quick look at the definition of a limit. Now, a limit is defined as a value. Let's ignore that. Is defined as a val the value of a function. So, a limit is a value that a function approaches as the input x approaches some particular value. And we just saw that in that previous example. Okay, so again, a limit is defined as the value that the function approaches as x approaches another value. In this case, we saw that x was approaching, my apologies, x was approaching negative infinity. Okay, we saw that there, and the limit approached zero. All right, so that's what it looks at. Once again, a limit is a value that a function approaches, previous question that was zero, as the input x approaches a particular value. That there is the formula saying that exact thing just in mathematical terms. As x approaches a number, okay, so in that last one is x was approaching, um, x was approaching negative infinity, then the function approaches the limit. So let's have a look at a particular example that might help to explain that a bit more. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 2 of the function x plus 3. Okay, so in order to look at this function, I'm going to look at a table of values. I'm going to look at some x values that approach 2. So what are some x values that approach 2? Well, you now we could look at, let's say, 1.5, 1 1.8, 1 1.9, we could even look at 1.999, etc. As you can see, my x values are all approaching 2. So look, let's look at what my limit of my function is going to be. So what is the function approach? as x approaches 2. Well, 1.5 plus 3 is 4.5. 1.8 3 is 4.8. 4.9, 4 4.99. You know, if I put 1.999, it would be 4.999. So you can see, as x approaches 2, so as x approaches 2, then my function, the limit of my function approaches 5. The limit approaches 5. In other words, we say the limit is 5. Okay, and I guess mathematically it's actually a lot easier than it seems because although we look at, you know, the numbers that are approaching 2, and saying that the limit approaches 5, often all we do is we whack the 2 into the equation, x plus 3, and say that the limit equals 2 plus 3, which equals 5. Okay, and actually, it's a lot easier than, uh, than, than what this is all made out to be. Okay, so let's have a look at um, a couple of examples that you might come across. Okay, we're going to find the limit of a function as x approaches negative 2, look at x squared plus 3. So what's the limit of this particular function? Well, all I would do is I'm going to get this negative 2, I'm going to chuck it in where the x is. So we're going to have 
negative 2 squared plus 3. Well, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 3 equals 7. Therefore, the limit equals 7 as x approaches negative 2. Nice and easy. So actually, as you can see, for the most part, it's actually a lot much easier than it seems. What about this particular question? The limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus x over x. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get this 0. We're going to chuck it in. This time, obviously, I've got three different x's there. So we're going to substitute the 0 into where they all are. Okay, so we get 0 squared plus 0 divided by 0, which equals 0 divided by 0. Uh-oh, we have a bit of a problem. 0 divided by 0. You might remember that this, my friends, is undefined. We cannot divide by 0. So is it as easy as it seems? In the first question, yes, very easy. In the second question, not so much, but actually it's not too difficult. Okay. What we're going to do in this case, because we know we can't divide by 0, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize first. And then what once I've done that, my apologies, that should be x outside of x plus 1 over x. I'm then going to simplify this particular function, okay, and then I'm going to substitute. Well, I've got x outside of x plus 1. That's because it makes x squared plus x. So I just factorize it. The x divided by x cancels out. So I'm just left with x plus 1. Now, if I take that 0 and substitute into there, we get 0 plus 1. Okay, which gives me a limit of 1 as x approaches 0. Not bad, hey? Not bad at all. So actually, you have basically two solved questions. The first one, where you just substitute in and it works. The second solid question, where if you substitute it in, we can uh, then need to factorize first, cancel, simplifying by cancelling out, and then substituting in to find out what that limit's going to be. Now, obviously, there's more to limits than just that. There's, um, there's going to be you know, understanding a few more limits, particularly when we talk about continuity and discontinuity. But basically, that's all we're doing. Okay, there's nothing much, much, much more different to that. I'm going to give you two more questions, and then I'll give you an opportunity to uh, answer these yourself and see what you can come up with. So we're going to find the limit as x approaches 10. Sorry, 10 um, of x squared minus 100 all over, um, let's say, minus 10 and then the second one will be the limit as x approaches um, 2 of x squared plus 5x um, negative 14 all over x take away 2 so how about you pause this have a crack and then follow my solution and see how you went. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you've done this. So I'm going to factorize the top one. So x minus 10, x plus 10, all over x minus 10. Okay, the reason I've done that is because 10 take away 10 is 0. That would not work. Okay, so I'm going to do it that way. Now I can take the x minus 10s out. So I'm just left with the x plus 10. So the limit as x approaches 10 is equal to 10 plus 10 which is equal to 20 okay so the limit is 20 as x approaches 10 likewise this question here if I put the 2 in there 2 take away 2 equals 0 that's not going to work so I'm going to factorize first so this question if I use my product and sum method I'm going to have um, x plus 7 x minus 2 all over x minus 2. Now the x minus 2 is cancelled. I'm left with x plus 7. If I get my 2, whack it in, I get 2 plus 7, which is equal to 9. So the limit is 9 as x approaches 2. Okay, 
algebraically pretty easy to solve as you can see not too challenging but obviously the ideas behind the limits is is a little bit more into it and obviously when we look at next lesson at continuity and discontinuity there will be a few extra things there but overall this is a very basic rundown of limit i hope this helped um, if any of it was confusing please let me know otherwise enjoy